deadly warning from the Potter Blog site, February 20th, 2014. Nearly 11,000 becquerels per cubic meter of air were released in uh, New Mexico at the WIP plant containing plutonium-239 and americium-241. Now we've calculated this value out here. Uh, obviously this is number is a much bigger discrepancy than what's been officially reported and uh, we can tell you why exactly that is. Uh, the protocol for air sampling filters is to take the radiation reading uh, on the filter and divide that by the amount of air that's gone through it over the number of days that filter has run. Now, the air filter in question had been running for five days. DOE stopped the people who test these filters from going in any sooner to retrieving them. So five days worth of air went across that filter. Any radiation on that filter would have been peanut buttered out as having occurred over a five day period. But if you believe the DOE people and the people responding at that site, the release, whatever it was, actually occurred only during a very brief moment in time. That's their quote. So if you believe DOE, the release happened in a very brief moment of time. We estimate that brief moment to be 30 seconds, half a minute. So what that means is, is their reading that was peanut buttered out over five days really happened over 30 seconds. So we did the math there to see what that release really was. And what it comes out to be is a combined 10,541 becquerels per meter cubed of air. If you break that out in individual pieces, it's uh, 1,300 rough becquerels of plutonium-239 and 9,200 becquerels of americium-241. Now here is the exact quote uh, from the people at the lab. It says, uh, the WIP underground exhaust shaft in the brief moments following when the radiation have occurred and when the WIP ventilation system shift to filtration mode. What they did here is a giant engineering faux pas. They took a measurement that was based on days of exposure and then they used that to quantify a release that happened during quote brief moments. Unbelievable to us. Now we've uh, put up the wind maps and we'll show you those in a second to show you what happened and where this stuff went to but it was concentrated and went to the north and west. Now it is within DOE's power to release the raw data and let the facts fall where they may, but don't expect that to happen as the situation is a matter of national security from a military radioactive disposal perspective. We don't think it's a coincidence that DOE originally reported that there was no release, yet prevented people from going on site to recover those air filters. That recovery delay served to reduce the total reported amount of contamination. Now we'll leave it to the reader to ponder why this engineering blunder time mismatch occurred. Yeah, it could have been an erroneous assumption on their part or it could be an erroneous assumption on our part. Nonetheless, for risk mitigation purposes, the 10,541 Becquerel measurement is what we go by. Nor do we by any means consider the current situation either safe or stable. And we'll tell you exactly what we mean by that. Uh, a little bit of doozy, something else you won't hear anywhere else, is if you, uh, again, look through this report, it says the radiation was present downwind of panel 7, room 7. Now the key, the key features, information here is room 7, panel 7. Panel 7 is their new dugout area. Room 7 is the furthest most room in that panel or tomb. Now, EPA analysis and engineering studies that track uh, that were designed to track the uh, buildup of explosive gases said that the highest concentrations of explosive gases were predicted to occur in room 7. So we believe that this actually was a radiation related generation of explosive hydrogen, methane, and volatile organic compounds which went off, ignited, and blew up in that room, releasing this plutonium. Whether or not the air filters at WIP can actually filter this, or if they even exist after an explosion and shock wave moves through there, and we don't know. But we would assume that they don't. Now let's look at the uh, wind map here real quick. 
here's a static map and we'll put this in motion here in a minute but uh, here's the general location of the plant and the winds are moving slightly to the west and north now here's the dynamic map let me zoom in here where we so we now this is the wind map from that day so the location is approximately here where this occurred and you can see the wind would take it slightly to the west and to the north actually funnels it and this is literally a funnel of this release like a like through a shotgun barrel straight up northwest up into Colorado that that would be the high concentration areas of it then as normal weather patterns move through this would have dispersed over the uh, breadbasket of the United States and unfortunately here towards St. Louis whoever got the first rainfall here probably got the uh, uh, the worst of it except for those people directly downwind or in this corridor it, there's a reason we call this a deadly warning EPA should release their raw data they won't. <laughs>